Okay, thank you. It being 4 p.m., I will call the meeting, City Council meeting of the Committee on City Services, which is also posted as a joint meeting with the Northampton City Council, in case that many of us show up in the same room. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I will note that present are Councillor Nash, Councillor Labarge, uh, and Councillor Bidwell is absent with excuse and a report, and I will chair, and I'm Councillor Maureen Hart. So first, let me, yes. yeah, I think that that's the next time. Okay, so yes, I would like to announce that this is being uh, video and audio recorded. Thank you, NCTV. <laughs> and I will ask for public comment, and seeing that there are no members of the public present, We'll move on to the next item, which are the minutes of um, oh, that's the minutes. Oops, sorry. The May meeting six. minutes. The meeting of the May sixth. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any additions, corrections, otherwise? All in favor? Aye. 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 And no uh, opposition or abstentions. So that counts. Thank you. So I think. Um, how, would, how would you guys like to do this? Would you like to each just report on your group of folks, yeah. like one at a time, then we have to go back and forth for each name? Or would, just what, go right go down the line. That sounds well, fine. Well, rather than going right down the line, I, I was wondering if I could just have Jim make a report, okay. uh, Miriam make a report, I'll read Dennis's report, and then we'll check off and make sure we've got everybody. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. I'll, I'll try to keep track of that as we go. So, who would like to report first? I Thanks, Mary. Okay. Council on Aging. Um, Donna Park, who lives at 205 Prospect Street, Northampton. Her term, July 2019 through June 2022. And this is a reappointment. talked with Donna on the phone we had a nice little talk and I interviewed her on May 13th um, Donna stated she has been active on the Council on Aging she is trying very hard to be supportive and work to be helpful in any way she can she works in the kitchen she volunteers when she can she really enjoys it she never had that experience she really feels being a member of the Council on Aging <clears throat> excuse me, that she is so happy to be contributing to the community. The programs have expanded, has offered more seminars and gatherings. Donna mentioned in May how a seminar has been put in place for seniors to learn all about Medicare 7 Essentials of Life. She is so happy to be on the Council on Aging and thanked all of us for talking with her about her reappointment. That you'd like to be back on it. Okay. Uh, I don't think we need to make the motions okay. now because if we're going to take all 37 as a group, all right. then we will only need one motion. It sounds like a plan. Yeah. Easy to look forward. That's our sure. yeah. Okay. So I think we just report on each of our. Yeah. That's fine. Um, also, next I have uh, Marin Mason, which is. Let's get his. Conservation Commission. It's a reappointment. Mason Moron. See Mason yeah. Moron. Yeah. yeah. And we had a lovely talk. Um, it was very. It was a pleasure talking with with Mason. He has served on the Conservation Committee since July 1976. Mason told me he was trying for 50 years. Graduate, graduated with wildlife degree and being on the Conservation Commission comes very close to using his knowledge. The commission believes in his knowledge and he is very happy to work with such knowledgeable members on the commission himself. He loves our community and he feels like he wants to give back to the community that he really likes. Mason stated he wouldn't like staying on the commission if he did not like it. 
We talked about the volunteering and the time and so much care on what they do for our city. I thanked him for his commitment being on the commission and Mason sure does want to be placed back on the commission. So, thank you. Just one little question. <laughs> this stood out for me and I'm sure it's a typo on his application. It says age 30 to 39 and if he's no. already uh, been on the... <laughs> no, so, I think okay. there's also a 70 plus, so I'm assuming that that's Yes. Well, oh, that's great. Really impressive. Yeah, that's a definite. <laughs> Okay, then I have Tom Jumpy, um, and he has put in for a reappointment again for Parks and Recreation Commission. Tom and I had a good talk on the phone, and he has been on the Parks and Recreation since June 2012, I mean 2012. Tom has been the chair since 2016. He states the commission is highly involved in the 4th of July fireworks, highly involved with parents and youths, and the commission is getting involved in a new sport to offer, the pickleball. I never heard of it, and you explained to me it's what that was all about. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's the biggest sport in the country. <laughs> Half tennis court, tennis and badminton, ping pong. Schools are offering it as an elective. The commission works very closely with the school department and the fields very closely. He really feels he wants to get back to the community and has applied to be reappointed. He enjoys being the chair and they are all working together to make Northampton what it is. So that's my first batch. Okay, thank you. And I got a second batch. Okay. If you want that one. I think we might as well go through because then we can just make sure we don't have any missing and deal with those then. Yeah. Get hers out. Okay. Um, Linda Morley. Um, she also is on the Community um, Preservation Commission. And Linda and I had a good talk on the phone. Um, she was, when I first called her, I did not hear back from her, and she apologized when she did call me. She was in Vermont for the weekend. So anyways, on her background, as I briefly noted in, her, in my application, is in the field of affordable housing. I served as in-house counsel to Wayne Wayfinders, Inc., formerly Half Housing, for many years. Through that, I obtained a solid grounding in the issues of affordable housing, as well as some of the available solutions. As you know, community housing is one of the allowable uses of CPA money. Many of the housing proposals that come before the committee are quite complex. I think it has been useful to have someone with relevant expertise to help in the view of those proposals. While I am informed about and committed to furthering community housing, I don't believe I am overly partitioned in my personal life. I highly value open space and recreation, another of the allowable uses of CPA funds, and have appreciated the extraordinary efforts of the city has made to expand both. Finally, as my husband is by profession an historical archaeologist, I have learned at our dinner table the importance of historic preservation. My experience on the committee has been personally quite rewarding. The committee has had excellent chairs, and under their guidance, the committee has been thoughtful, careful, respectful, and engaged. It has been a treat to participate and learn from and appreciate the other committee members as well as their project proponents and their supporters. I would be pleased to be able to com continue on the committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Sounds that great. One. Yeah. Now, okay. we did her. Now, who else did I have? Yeah, did you have Alex Jarrett? Yep, I got him yeah. coming up yeah. next. Yeah, he's, he's on housing partnership. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's in housing partnership with the other batch. Yeah. yeah. 
to the speaker. Okay, Alex Jarrett. See, my doesn't have too much on this. And he lives at 8 High Street in Florence. His term is July 2019 through June 2022. Alex and I talked on the phone. It was really enjoyable talking with Alex. Um, when I had talked with him, he had just returned from the weekend and he got my messages. Thanks for all your work. Here's why I want to be reappointed to the housing partnership. I lived in corporate housing for most of my time in Northampton and have assisted others in purchasing multifamily properties cooperatively. I developed my facilitation in cooperative governance skills with my 15 years as a worker slash owner at the Petal People Cooperative. Affordable housing is very important to me personally. Many people I know struggle to remain in Northampton due to rising rents and housing costs. I bring energy to empower people with skills and legal structures that will help them stay here and to help them organize to fight for their rights. I bring lots of ideas and energy to research them. I want to create more opportunities for home ownership, for example, through cooperative housing and community land trust. I want to help the city pursue every opportunity for affordability, alternative tax strategies, encouraging home sharing, incentives and programs to encourage landlords to rent apartments or rooms at lower than market rate and encouraging zoning changes that permit lower cost housing. Alex, Jerry. Thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. I think if nobody had more than five, so. Two from the new batch of three from the old. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, thank you, Counselor. We'll take all those up with the others as you move. I'm off. Okay, so I get three. Is that correct? I think you had three, but then you will also email. So here's what I had. I had Craig Delapena, Tess Perone Poe, and Patrick Bowen. And Tess is twice. She's a. That's right. Person. So that's so. Yeah, you, you may have only had four. Um, because I'm, I'm looking at this last group and wondering, did you actually, oh, you said, you said Patrick Bowen, so he's in that last group. And then, right, you, you know what, you I'll report you on these and if I we're think missing, that's what, I think that's what we do. I'm checking them off as we go. And anything that we missed, then the three of us will evaluate the I got all mine. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's start with, so it, I recently took a long trip and made these phone calls from different interstates. <laughs> and, um, uh, had a chance while in Jersey to speak with Craig Della Pena, and um, he is up for reappointment uh, to the Historical Commission. Uh, Craig uh, spoke of you know how he loves uh, the the the, um, the makeup of uh, development in the the Valley. He, as you know, he owns that B and B in Florence, and that. The idea that you can be in a historic downtown and then be out in farm fields in five minutes later, just walking. And um, that he mentioned how uh, he's uh, one of the things that he's proud of that the Historical Commission is working on right now is a partnership for a, uh, with Cooley Deck to recognize people who have gone above and beyond around historic preservation. So. These are things that he wants to continue to work on. And um, so that's my Craig report. He's enthusiastic about signing up once again. Um, Tess Perone Poe, she's, she's my twofer here. Um, she is um, up for reappointment to the planning board, but she will be filling the um, um, planning board seat on the housing partnership. And she's doing that for the first time. Uh, Tess um, is Tess is highly qualified for this job. She um, she uh, for, for both positions. Currently, she's serving as chair of the planning board. Uh, she's been on the planning board for roughly a decade now. Uh, she um, she's but 
she's really interested in this uh, piece of being part of the, the serving on the housing partnership because their real interest around planning and development is to be involved around affordable housing mm -hmm. and the housing partnership see and one of the things she appreciates is planning board is about setting limitations you know this project can move forward it, that um, that it's often not about being creative and thinking big ideas and so um, that's she's really looking forward to serving on the housing partnership so she can use that part of her um, uh, uh, planning and development training um, and then Patrick Bowen um, we've had Patrick come to us a few times in council to speak to us about various issues he's very thoughtful very dedicated um, he spoke to, he's up for um, the housing partnership as well um, one of the things in, he's he's been uh, instrumental in a number of initiatives that they've been working on one of them recently is the um, the, uh, the, the study that they're doing to look at what are the barriers to housing in Northampton and uh, to affordable housing in Northampton and that um, we had a long discussion about the things that that were interesting you know he says sometimes it's just little things like you know maybe certain websites need to be in, in Spanish as well as in English and then there's even the, there's more difficult problems it, He's completely fascinated with this, and um, he spoke of reporting to us sometime back at council back uh, in the early fall in September, and that I, I think it's going to be fascinating to hear what they've come up with. So anyway, uh, clearly he's um, he's dedicated to this uh, this uh, committee and this cause, and so those are my reports. Okay, thank you. Patrick I spoke to in Illinois and Tess I think was somewhere down in um, North Carolina <laughs> okay. all hands free mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> well I guess I'll um, move on to Councillor Bidwell's report and uh, Councillor Bidwell wrote to us and said that he spoke with Brian Adams, who is being um, recommended for reappointment to the CPC. I spoke with Brian on May 28. He is greatly involved and enjoyed his time <clears throat> on the CPC, including serving as chair. He finds the committee members to be thoughtful, inquisitive, and passionate. He believes the composition of the committee is excellent, building an expertise in all the right areas. He welcomes the opportunity to continue serving. <clears throat> Dennis also spoke with uh, Joanne Le Levine for the Board of Health. I'm just making sure I get my check marks here. Yeah, I'm working on it, so. <laughs> um, so Board of Health, oh yes, that's in the first, the first large batch, okay. <clears throat> As a physician and infectious disease specialist, Joanne brings very important expertise to the board. When we spoke May 28, she said she enjoys her service on the board and looks forward to continued service if confirmed. She is interested in exploring what additional authority the board has in matter of religious exemptions to vaccinations in light of current concern about measles immunization rates. Uh, and Councillor Bidwell also spoke with Terry Paul Payne for the appointment to the planning board. Just bear with me while I get my check marks here. This is from Dennis. Uh, Terry told me he has told the mayor he has withdrawn his application for reappointment to the planning board. And did we get advance notice of that? You know, we didn't get independent notice from the mayor's office about okay. that. But okay. That one. Can we clarify that? Yeah. I mean, I think what we might want to do is we can go ahead and take the motion, you know, make the motion and recommendation just in case. Right. But if in the meantime, before Thursday, that should be clarified whether or not, whether or not that, you know, because what will happen on Thursday is um, in the consent agenda, right. we'll ask for an approval of everything. So it would be helpful if we get a communication and then we can just pull that out when, when right. You know, once the president reads it. 
So yeah. again, he was at the joint meeting of the planning board. I know, I remember. Yes, yes. So, so let's down. let's find out more about okay. that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear more of you know, specifics, but I think we should include. Sure. Um, okay. And uh, Councilor Bidwell also spoke with Martha Lyon, who is up for reappointment to the historical commission. And let me make a check, and then I will read that report. From Dennis, I spoke with Martha on May 29, and she told me that since the resignation earlier this year of Commission Chair David Drake, she has been serving as acting chair. Mm. She's excited about the work of the commission and a variety of projects underway, and awaiting the commission's attention. She looks forward to continuing as a member, and notes that two vacancies on the commission need to be filled. Mm -hmm. And I think we can probably expect another batch from where, you know, because usually they come at the last minute, so. Okay, and those were the um, ones that were submitted in the report from Councilor Bibbo. And that leaves my report. So, I'll just go down the ones that I saw. So, uh, um, <clears throat> I did serve with Gordon Shaw, who's been um, recommended for a reappointment to the Housing Partnership. When I served on the Housing Partnership, um, Actually, I remained on the housing partnership after election to city council because it was before we had that rule where you had to, mm -hmm. you could not be, I had also been on the housing authority. Yeah. But my, my position on the housing partnership was as um, a representative from the housing authority. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but I just want to get some of the details. So Gordon Shaw, as I told you, has been on at least as long as I was, but in fact, I think it's even longer. I'm looking for the, um, exact dates, but so from my uh, experience on the board working with Gordon Shaw, very committed, very um, active, and certainly an important representative because he's an attorney with legal aid mm -hmm. and specializes in housing law. So um, his recommendation went without saying. Even. I also spoke with Mike Quinlan. Michael Quinlan is being recommended for reappointment, excuse me, to the Whiting Street uh, Fund. Now, as you all remember, that was kind of, I think it was renamed the Whiting Street Fund yes. um, from a previously Board of Almoners. Isn't that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So I'm going to pull up his. Uh, <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, Michael wrote to me and said, thanks very much for reaching out, I really appreciate it. He reminded me that I know his dad, Mike Quinlan, because we were teachers at Smith Oak for many years together as well. I've really enjoyed my two years on the Whiting Street Fund Committee. The philanthropy Mr. Street showed with his gift to Northampton is something I find very admirable, and I've been honored to work with the other committee members in seeing that the funds be used according to his wishes and to the overall benefit of the Northampton community. I have a passion for Northampton and also compassion for the less fortunate, and so I felt this would be a good fit for me, and I feel it has been. As soon as I realized that my term was coming to an end, I quickly acted to contact David's office and ask for another term. I hope you find this satisfactory and will endorse me to continue to serve the city that I love, as well as honor Mr. Street's wishes. Um, and that's all. Okay. And then I also um, uh, evaluated Denny Nolan, Board of Assessors. And again, I, you know, I, I know him as most of us do as being a long time realtor. And from that experience, I mean, bringing that experience especially to the Board of Assessors, whose major job is to assess all of the property value of homes in the city. Um, and his length of service on that on that board, I, I think, uh, warranted a positive recommendation as well. Um, I notice a Courtney Hummel that I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking. I'm wondering. I think I may not on this list have taken off the names of the people that well, that I were longer been, that, that had been yeah, on longer than a year. I'm just noticing that. Yes, okay. But I, 
Because I think she was but not longer than a year, and um, she was less than a year. Been had been reappointed within the last year. I remember her name because yes. she took my job when I left South Padre. So oh, I happened to okay. know her. And right, right, right. But there is a there is a list here that that, that does show what it does. Is it she shows was one the, the ones one, that yeah. And I think she was one of them. <laughs> right. But I also um, took the appointment of Sarah Norfolk, um, uh, whom I've known, again, for decades in the city. I knew her before she went on to become a uh, construction supervisor and physical engineer, um, and brings an incredible amount of experience from the field to the Zoning Board of Appeals, which, as we know, is really important because those are often very um, controversial decisions that come to the ZBA. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend her reappointment. And now we'll just, I think, look at the rest of the list, which is really only the first list from May 2nd. Right. And we'll just confirm that these are people, there's only a few of them, I, I, again, they're, and they're the ones I'm assuming that were appointed within the last year. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that are left? The ones that are left on that first oh, sheet, one. such as Courtney Hummel, right. Randy right. Krotowski, yes. Emma Cornwell, yeah. Karen Belvance Grace. Now, Karen, no, I don't. Oh, well, it. if not, I'm happy to speak to her yeah, appointment to the Human Rights Commission because I've worked with her. Well, let me report yeah. then, just to, you know, for, for that sake, that I've known. Karen Bellavance Grace also for decades. We also know her yeah. from working in city government in the mayor's office for many years. Mm -hmm. And um, she has been a very active um, member of the Human Rights Commission since her initial appointment. Yes, and, you know, pulls together. I'm not sure how uh, if you have these in your own wards, but, you know, this yeah. last year they pulled together that meeting to um, address human rights issues in, in a ward by ward level. And, um, and she's also my neighbor. Paper, so We've all known. I recommend yes, the uh, reappointment there. And then I see the other ones that we haven't checked off are on the last page. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed David Cronin, and I did speak with him, in fact. So my apologies. Let me tell you about my conversation with um, David Cronin. Oops. <clears throat> and um, David Cronin is being recommended for reappointment to the Parks and Rec Commission. And he wrote to me, thanks for your email concerning reappointment to the Parks and Rec Commission. I am still very interested in serving on the commission. I am a lifelong resident of Northampton and have been very involved in both youth sports as a coach and adult leagues as a participant. The Northampton Recreation Department continues to provide first-class programs and facilities to its residents. I look forward to continued service with the rest of the commission. Mm -hmm. Well, that and, as we know, the pickball craze that's now down <laughs> over Northampton, <laughs> um, I think warrants a positive recommendation to full city council and we'll off with that. The other ones that were left we're just Elizabeth Silver, and I know we dealt with yes. her in the last year. We did that. And Krista, and Krista Grenat, yes. and that she oh, was yeah. also. I, and, and Benjamin Capistrand also was, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, within but, the past couple of months. But so. where is Benjamin? Is which, which? He's on the second page. Um, uh, I think we just, like, which commission? March. Um, which committee? Council on Aging. Because Dan's been all on him, I want to say at the March. I, I don't have council on. Really? I don't. Um, well, okay. So Is on the second page. See. He's oh, I'm sorry. It's right there at the top. Continued from okay. The okay. And so he was also one within the last year. Yeah, Dan is good. Well. Yes. So, right. Okay. Well, okay. So we know that the ones that neither of us nor Dennis specifically reviewed including Randy Krotowski. Oh, well, let me start at the top, just so we know. Actually, what I'll do is I'll read each name and I'll note those that were uh, That's great. recommended That's in the last year, okay? Yeah. So, uh, I'll read the names and then I'll accept a motion for a positive recommendation of the group to yeah. the full city council. So what we have are um, Courtney Hummel for reappointment to the Arts Council, and these are all a term, 2019 to 2022. Mm -hmm. We have um, 
for the Board of Assessors, Denny Nolan. Uh, oh, did I read the address? Oh, well, Courtney is at 320 Elm Street, Northampton. Denny Nolan is at 319 Elm Street, coincidentally, for the Board of Assessors. Um, we had a recommendation for Joanne Levin for the Board of Health from 40 Columbus Ave. Mm -hmm. And to the Council on Aging, Donna Park of 205 Prospect Street. And Benjamin Capistrant, um, also, excuse me, to the Council on An Aging um, from 48 High Street in Florence. To the CPC, we had uh, Brian Adams of 36 Arlington Street. To the Conservation Commission, we had um, C. Mason Moran of 18 Ellington Street. I'm sorry, I did neglect to uh, point out that of the list I read, Courtney Hummel and Benjamin Capistrant are both um, applicants that have been uh, reappointed in the last year, or that we have evaluated in the mm -hmm. last year. So again, next to the Conservation Commission would be Randy Krotowski of 171 Emerson Way, also a, a recent appointee. And to the Disability Commission, Emma Cornwell of 35 Holy Street, also a recent appointee. To the Historical Commission, Martha Lyon of 313 Elm Street. To the Historical Commission, Craig Del Pena, 62 Chestnut Street. To the Housing Partnership, Tess Perron Poe, 32 Masonic Street. To the Human Rights Commission, um, Beth Balavance Grace. Yeah. And, I'm sorry, and mm -hmm. two. Oh, well, so I'm not reading the names of those that have the, the line, the strike line right. to them the because they, 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 they've actually withdrawn yeah, those, those applicants. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think you said Beth Balavance Grace instead of Karen. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, they're both, but they used to be both my names. I know. Okay, well, <laughs> My correction script is out I approve that one too, but. <laughs> So let me, let me correct that, please. It is Karen Delavance Grace to the Human Rights Commission of 19 Church Street. And then to the Parks and Recreation Commission, Thomas Dunphy of 6 Chesterfield Road, Lees. David Cronin of 103 Pioneer Knowles, Extension, Florence. And to the Planning Board, for official purposes, Terry Culhane, 5 Stearns Court. Um, and recent appointees were Krista Granat of 492 Elm Street, and to the Zoning Board of Appeals, <coughs> Elizabeth Silver of 67 Willow Street, Florence, also a re recent reappointee, or a recent appointment, and Sarah North Northrup of 147 Hinkley Street, Florence. And then in addition to this group, we have a second group, including... Should we do the group separately? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can yeah, do the group yeah, 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 okay. Yes. So let's do that. Council that, agenda? That, yes. I think that's safe, better safe right. than sorry. So can I have a motion, please, to approve this lunch <coughs> as a group to their respective <laughs> committees and commissions? I second. Moved and second seconded to send all these names with a positive recommendation to their respective commissions and committees. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions? These 37 song. carry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you keep having on your mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry, there were only I think 15 there. Not even. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That was a, that was just I didn't even catch the number. You don't need to record it. And um, our, our second uh, group comes from the uh, correspondence from the mayor of May 16th. And we have already reported on the following and are hoping for positive recommendations mm -hmm. to the Community Preservation Committee from Linda Morley of 244 Prospect Street, to the Housing Partnership, Patrick Bogan of 95 Stry Ave, Florence, Alexander Jarrett of 8 High Street, Florence, 
Gordon Shaw of 582 Haydenville Road leads, and to the planning board, Tess Perron Poe of 32 Masonic Street, and to the Whiting Street Bond Committee, Michael Quinlan of 712 Bridge Road. And can I have a motion for these two, four, for these six appointees to their respective motion? Second. Okay, moved and seconded to send to the full council a positive recommendation of these six names to their respective committees and commissions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Well, that was much easier, easier than I expected it might be. But congratulations, everyone, because it, it can't be over. But I do want to point out that all of, I mean, we have incredibly capable, is this the thing that's most impressed me of all of the um, work of this committee is the incredible qualifications and commitment and dedication to the city. And I wish that we could get that information out there to the rest you of the can. public. Uh -huh. yeah. Do it out to City Council. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right, thank you, Councilor. I'll You're point that out. Okay. okay. Well, let me look back at the agenda. But um, I'm not sure there's no much left. Here, take them all. Thank you. But I need that. Okay, okay, we go. Okay. okay. Whenever you're done. So I think we got everybody nice there. Day. We didn't miss anyone. Nope. Okay. That's it. Then what I want to see on our agenda um, it isn't listed here, but I'm assuming. Oh, yes, it is. Of course, no. Well, <clears throat> you typically our next order of business would be a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. <laughs> Non-debatable. All in favor. <laughs> Hi. 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 Okay. <laughs> that passes. Thanks. Oh. <laughs>